morning. This is Aman Jain, Assistant Professor in the Dep uh, Department of Civil Engineering, Sir Padmapan Singhal University. Uh, this is my video lecture on en Environment Engineering Second CE452. In this uh, video lecture, we, uh, the contents of the program is uh, introduction, types of settling, sedimentation, sedimentation tanks, coagulation, and fluctuation. And then last, we will study about filtration. To introduce this topic, let me first of all introduce how water treatment, supply and wastewater collection, transport and disposal is done in your city. Let's start from intake. This is the intake. Intake is a water resource structure. It may be a dam, it may be uh, like in Udaipur it is Fatehsagar or Pichola or it may be Jaisaman Lake or it may be anything. It may be any type of canal system or it may be anything. Then uh, with the help of pumping house, we are just uh, taking water from the source with the help of pump house. We are taking, and uh, this is the this is a pipeline. This is the pipeline which is known as conveyance. And uh, through conveyance, we are taking the we are transporting the water, uh, which is to be treated to the treatment plant. This is the treatment plant. Okay. From this treatment plant, uh, we treat the water. How we will treat the water, and uh, what we will do in uh, what what all steps we are taking in the treatment plant. We are going to study in the next coming slides, uh, and with, then with the help of pump house, uh, we will uh, uh, we will transfer the water, uh, transfer the pure treated water into the tanks. Okay. From tanks, overhead tanks, there are many types of tanks uh, which are used uh, to store the water. Uh, so uh, store the water. So from the, uh, those tanks, we are uh, through the uh, through the help of pipelines, several pipelines, uh, we are delivering that pure treated water to the housing societies or public in general. Okay. Then here the motto of uh, uh, here the motto of uh, uh, pure water treatment process ends. And now starts the waste water collection, its treatment, and its disposal. Okay. Uh, first of the question arises is that why we are treating the waste water? Because to, in previous semester we uh, we, have, we talked about COD and VOD contents of the waste water. So to uh, there are some standards in which the COD and VOD of the waste water should uh, should be there, and when Disposing the, uh, disposing the waste water, it should be in the permissible limits uh, in the in any water bodies. So let's um, um, what happens about 80 percent of the water which is uh, which we sub we are supplying to the household uh, household society household and household society housing societies. Uh, those, those that water is converted into waste water. Waste water is any wastewater which is sewage, sludge, or anything which is coming out of your kitchens, anything which is coming, uh, anything uh, which is coming out of out of your bathrooms, latrines, and um, public toilets, etc. And also, you may, uh, if it if it is the industrial area, you may include the industrial waste also to it. Okay, so there is a. Um, there is a uh, wastewater collection system uh, which is a uh, sewage uh, collection system or sewerage system of, uh, of any, uh, of any uh, city. So from that system we are transferring, transferring uh, the wastewater to the wastewater uh, treatment plant. Okay. Uh, mainly uh, the, it, is, uh, it is based on the gravity system. Okay. So, when you are, uh, when you are, when somebody is designing the wastewater system, uh, wastewater collection system, we are designing, uh, uh, we are designing, keeping in view the gravity or the levels of the city. High level, uh, it goes from higher level to lower level. Uh, 
generally waste water treatment plant are, may, uh, are constructed and the low lying areas of the city near the natural water bodies okay so here uh, so now we are treating the water water here now from and after the treatment the water is uh, stored in this uh, treatment uh, treatment plant and then it is uh, when it uh, when it is confirmed that it um, that it obeys the standards of uh, standards uh, Indian standards of any environmental standards then it is disposed of in the natural water bodies like rivers um, as an example from the Udaipur city I, I can give of the Ayer river which uh, in which the wastewater is uh, disposed of is disposed of after its treatment so this was the introduction how water treatment and supply is done from the intake structure to the to your homes and how uh, wastewater is collected from your home to the natural resources so this was the all process and uh, this is the introduction let's now talk about what is the water treatment philosophy that how uh, pure water is treated and um, there is a there is a nice uh, uh, nice diagram waiting for you in the, this slide uh, we are taking the raw water from the intake structure then uh, we are screening it then it goes to primary sedimentation chamber then uh, we are doing sedimentation uh, in primary sedimentation we are uh, doing sedimentation using uh, gravity only and uh, nothing uh, nothing another material uh, which uh, which adds uh, some speed to the, the sedimentation is not not added into it and then uh, the water goes into the coagulation and flocculation uh, flocculation basins then it is going it is uh, taken for secondary sedimentation uh, so basically this method is called sedimentation method this method is called sedimentation this is screening this is uh, low water from water source this is we are talking um, we are taking low water from the uh, water source then we are screening it uh, there are many types of uh, screens available this is the sedimentation and uh, then filtration is done then disinfection is done disinfection is uh, sterilizing the water with, with um, uh, some sterilizing agent uh, in which uh, disease causing bacteria and viruses are, uh, are treated uh, and uh, they are killed and now the water is sent to the supply this is the community to your homes so basic this is the layout of conventional water treatment plant ok so that from where the water is coming and the where, from where the water is going so this was the common philosophy um, because the available water the available raw water uh, must be treated and purified before they can be supplied to the public for their domestic use um, domestic industrial or any other use the extent of treatment required to be given uh, to the particular water uh, particular water depends upon the characteristics and quality of the available water and also upon the quality requirements for the intended use so it is clear that um, what are the standards uh, uh, that should water follow and uh, let's look at let's have just have a look at the uh, indian standards uh, what they are saying so uh, this is the uh, depending on the magnitude of treatment required proper unit operations are selected and arranged into the proper sequential order 
for the purpose of modifying quality of raw water to meet the desired standards and uh, these are the desired standards which uh, um, I mean there are WHO standards, there are Indian standards so generally in, uh, generally in India we are following the Indian standards so this is, this is the Indian standards um, Indian standards for, for the drinking water uh, uh, there are physical and chemical standards uh, physical standards are for turbidity uh, which is uh, measured in the uh, NTO units uh, the second one is uh, color which is uh, measured on hair scale um, and then there is test and order ok so this is the tolerable unit and if no alternative source is available the limit may be extended up to uh, 25 on 50 uh, where turbidity, turbidity limit should not be uh, more than 10 and uh, should not be more than 10 uh, color also and uh, test in order should not be unobjectionable ok and uh, uh, when it comes to chemical unit, chemical limits uh, it is pH uh, pH uh, the value in the standards is 7 to 8.5 and if no other alternative source is available then it may be extended up to 6.5 to 9.2 uh, TDS total dissolved solids which is measured in milligram per liter uh, the desirable tolerable limit is around 500 to 1500 and if no alternative sources are available it may be extended up to 3000 also total hardness which is measured in as CaCO3 maybe uh, the desirable tolerable limits is between 200 to 300 and then uh, 600 is the maximum limit <coughs> to write same way there are um, um, for, the, for different parameters like chlorides, sulfates, fluorides, nitrates, calcium, iron there are various, uh, various Indian standards for which we have to treat the water in the treatment plant and uh, we will uh, do it and how we will do it we are showing in the next uh, slides so now when we know the standards when we know how to treat the water uh, we should know what the water is which kind of water we have to treat so we have to, uh, we have to know that what is the type what is the current type of raw water we are, uh, we are getting is it more hard is it more acidic or it is, uh, is it more basic we have to know each and every parameter which we we were, uh, we were talking in the previous slide about the standards so depending on depending upon that the engineer has to take the decision that it, what extent it should be treated so that it is uh, the process is economic because the uh, taking upon the Indian economy we are not having that much of uh, that much um, we are not having that much amount of money that we should um, uh, we, we can supply the RO water to everybody or mineral water to everybody so we have to uh, uh, give uh, we have to supply a bare minimum level of uh, we have to follow at least bare minimum standards so that we can supply the water to the uh, to the homes uh, efficiently uh, so this is the typical functions of each unit operations okay <coughs> Um, this is uh, this is the unit treatment process, and this is this is the function removal of uh, function. Okay, removal of color, order, and test. If water is containing, uh, what is containing any type of order, any type of uh, color, uh, color, or any type of test, we have to go for aeration and chemical treatment. Also, uh, tre treatment. If there is some floating matter into it, floating matter may be your leaves your dead bodies of uh, animals or some uh, some other uh, ins uh, i mean small uh, small animals living aquatic aquatic animals or um, some other animals which are uh, living on land there are big canals and um, uh, sometimes ac accidentally some cows or some um, uh, buffaloes fell into it and uh, dies so uh, floating matter uh, uh, Floating matter may be removed by screening, and after screening, this is the preliminary uh, part. That uh, after screening, we are going for chemical. Uh, this uh, 
each and every method. So if uh, there are uh, chemical, chemical methods are used for the iron and manganese removal. Um, if water is hard, there are many problems associated with hard water. So if water is hard, yeah, we may go for softening. Hardness is of two types. It's um, permanent hardness and um, temporary hardness. So we are having different different methods to remove both kind of hardness. Um, then if there is any suspended metals, uh, suspended metals that metal which can't be seen uh, by naked eyes. So or maybe it can be seen by uh, naked eyes. Uh, it is just like sand, uh, sand or smaller than sand. So it is removed by sedimentation. Then <coughs> suspended metal part of collagen metal and bacteria is removed by coagulation. We are adding any coagulating agent into the water and uh, then it can be removed by uh, this coagulation. After that, if any kind of remaining collateral dissolved matter or bacteria are remaining in the water, we are going for we are going for a separate uh, further uh, process, uh, further treatment process, which is known as filtration. Uh, and then after after filtration, if there there are any kind of pathogenic bacteria or any matters or re reducing substances, we are removing uh, we are removing them by uh, disinfection. Types of treatment required for different sources. Okay, we are taking water. As I told that uh, there are various intake. <coughs> there are various intake uh, intake structures and uh, various sources of water like uh, natural uh, natural uh, uh, sources. Uh, and uh, depending upon the sources, we have to uh, give different type of uh, different type of. Uh, treatment to it. So first of all it is ground water and spring water fairly free from uh, contamination. So the ground water is best or stream water is best. It it barely requires any treatment. So or it may be there that we should go for only chlorination so that the further contamination is not there. So no treatment or chlorination. Second uh, it is uh, Groundwater with chemicals and minerals and gases. We are taking groundwater. Sometimes the groundwater quality is not so good. So we have to treat it with aeration, coagulation if necessary, and uh, we may go for. Uh, we have to go sometimes for filtration and disinfection also. Then uh, the third one, which is the major major source of uh, water for any city, uh, that that is uh, lakes, surface with uh, water reservoirs. With less amount of pollution, so they are including all those above treatment. We have to go for disinfection also, and other surface, uh, other surface water, water such as rivers, canals, impounded reservoirs like dams, uh, with a considerable, uh, considerable amount of pollution. We have to go for full complete process uh, of treatment of water, which we were we were discussing, uh, we, we have discussed in the previous slides. Now to start with the start with the first step, we will discuss about screening. Uh, that what is screening and why it is necessary. So this is just an idea. We will we have to we will study about screening um, in detail. Uh, we will study in detail about screening uh, in few slides later. So this is screening. Screening is the first unit operation used at water and wastewater treatment plants. Uh, WWTP is, uh, is a short form usually we are using in environmental engineering for wastewater treatment plants and WTP is uh, uh, the short form for water treatment plants. Uh, but you should not get confused with WWTPs and WTPs because they are both separate things. Uh, screening removes objects such as rags, papers, plastics and metals to prevent damage and clogging of downstream equipment, piping and apprentices. All so we are having all sorts of sorts of instruments like pipes. <coughs> there are numerous pipings and uh, pipings, apprentices in water treatment plant and they get affected, they get clogged by this rags, papers, plastics, 
uh, in many things so that we have to uh, for that uh, to stop to stop and to mitigate that uh, clogging we have to uh, just remove this uh, uh, this all sorts of physical things at the at the outset of the uh, of the treatment plan so it's modern uh, some modern rigorous water treatment plants use both coarse skins and fine skins well now and now we are using both uh, uh, Best water and in raw water, both type of screen, both screens as well as fine screens are used in both. Okay, after screening, it there comes setting. Setting is the process by which particles settle to the bottom of a liquid and form a sediment. Particles experience a force either due to gravity or due to centrifugal motion tends to move in a uniform manner in the direction exerted by that force. What is the purpose of setting? To remove pore suspended dispersed phase, to remove coagulated and flocculated impurities, to remove precipitated impurities and after chemical treatment, to settle the sludge biomass after uh, activated sludge process and quickly filters. So, settling. There are small suspended particles uh, in water which are um, in colloidal form and uh, we have to remove and with the help of gravity we can remove them so when the water is uh, yeah, the what when when what when water is uh, given uh, given some rest and then particles experience some force that may be either due to gravity or due to centrifugal motion um, and, which, uh, and then water tends to move in um, uh, where water tends to move in a uniform manner in the direction exerted by that force it is generally at the bottom of sedimentation tank or um, also known as sediment uh, setting tank <coughs> so what is the purpose of setting suspended solid is present in the water having a specific gravity greater than the water so here the specific gravity plays a vital role that when specific gravity of any colloidal or suspended particle, suspended solids when the specific gravity is greater than the water they tend to settle down by gravity as soon as the turbulence is retarded by offering some storage so storage is given storage is provided by getting water to the rest basin in which the flow is retarded is called, is called settling tank the net Setting tank, or it may be referred to sometimes, it may be also referred as uh, sedimentation tank. Theoretical average time for which uh, the water is detained in the setting tank is called detention period. The detention period is the time for which the particular amount of water is stored in that particular tank. There are four kinds of settling. So, in this, uh, this is the this is very much important. There we are. Uh, yeah. We are doing the settling process uh, in many types. Uh, there is this type one is discrete particle setting. Particle settles individually without interaction with neighbor neighboring part uh, neighboring particles. So in which the colloidal particles or suspended particles do not have any interaction with the neighboring part neighboring particles. The settling is type one, known as discrete particle setting. Type 2 is flocculent particles in which flocculation causes the particles to increase in mass and settle at the faster rate. It is just like that. We are adding any, uh, we are adding any uh, material to it. This is the tank in which water is there. This is the water. These are the suspended particles. When we are adding, when we are adding any uh, coagulant into it. Its mass, shape, and size gets uh, affected by it. It's like this. It is the original, and after flocculation, it becomes like this. So it it takes time. It takes more time. Time taken by this 
and time taken by this, this is more, this is less because it is heavy and due to gravity it comes down very easily. Type third, hindered and zone setting. The mass of particles tends to settle as a unit per unit with um, with individual particles remaining in the fixed position with respect to each other. Type four, this compression. Uh, the concentration of the particles uh, in is so high that sedimentation can only occur through compaction of the structure. So this type one and type two are in our syllabus of uh, uh, SPSU. So we will we will go through uh, we will go in detail in, for this type one and type two only. Next is the sedimentation. Sedimentation is a physical water treatment process using gravity to remove suspended solids from water. Solid particles entering, entering by the turbulence of moving water may be removed naturally by sedimentation in the still water of lakes and oceans. Sailing basins are um, ponds uh, constructed for the purpose of removing uh, removing entrant solids by sedimentation. Clarifiers are the tanks built with the mechanical means for continuous removal of solid being disposed by sedimentation. So sometimes there is a confusion between uh, uh, settling and sedimentation. So let me so let me uh, clarify that confusion that setting is a unit operation which uh, in which solids are drawn towards a source of attraction. The particular type of setting that will be discussed in this section is gravitational setting and uh, it would, uh, should be noted that setting is different from sedimentation. So what is, now let's, do, let's have a look at the sedimentation. Settling is the only part of sedimenting, okay? This should be remembered. Um, uh, sedimentation is the condition whereby the solids are already at the bottom and in this process of sedimenting, settling is not yet sedimenting, but the particles are falling down, falling down the water column in response to gravity. Of course, as soon as the solids reach the bottom, they begin, they begin sedimenting. In the physical treatment of water and wastewater, the settling is normally carried out in settling or sedimentation basin. So let's talk about, uh, lastly we can talk about the types of setting, uh, types of setting tanks. Sedimentation, may, uh, sedimentation tanks may function either intermittently or continuously. Intermittently means um, it, it may, uh, it may function for a, uh, for, uh, for a few time, for, a few, uh, for some period and then it may stop, it may, give, it may be given rest and uh, uh, after that uh, it, may, uh, it may be start function again and there are other types of fermentation tanks in which functions continuously. The intermittent tanks also called Q-set type tanks uh, and are those which store water for a certain period and keep in, in complete rest. In a continuous flow type tank, the flow velocity is only reduced and the water is not brought to the complete rest as it done in intermittent type. So that is the main difference between intermittent uh, and continuously uh, settling or sedimentation tanks. Settling basins may be either long rectangular or circular in plane. Long narrow rectangular tanks with horizontal flow are generally referred to the uh, circular tanks with radial or spiral flow. So, for today it is, uh, we are stopping right now at this point and uh, in the next classes uh, we, will, uh, we will study, we will discuss about design of long rectangular setting machines uh, and their working, then we will discuss, uh, then we will discuss about circular sediment setting tanks or sedimentation tanks. So, and then after the flocculation, coagulation, filtration, disinfection. So all about low water treatment plant is remaining and uh, after that in the next coming classes we will discuss about